Welcome back to my channel. Today we're looking at the new update for Illustrator 2022. This update has brought forward a bunch of new features which will definitely help change your workflows. 3D has been drastically overhauled. The approach has been changed to a brand new panel which can be applied through the effects panel and then you can just click on the extrude. The reason why this has changed so much is to try and create more dynamic workflows for 3D shapes. We've got four different approaches, the plane, the extrude, the revolve and the inflate and I'll quickly show you how they work. So the plane is essentially just taking your shape and putting it into whichever 3D view. Sometimes you can be a bit slow to start up but once you have the view set up you can move it around into whichever view you need. Extruding is literally extruding the face to add 3D depth. This can be used to create shapes like cubes and things like that. Where these shapes are all live you are able to adjust the corners, the strokes, and any sort of visual approach. We are also able to use bevels, which can be applied in steps. So you can create really interesting shapes quite easily within Illustrator. Uh, you can flip the bevel so the depth goes inwards as well as outwards. Um, and you can also change quite a lot of the settings. So you're able to create shapes that realistically work for whichever environment you're needing them for. You can play with the views using either the panel itself or by clicking on the circle and moving it around in 3D space. This is quite common if you use 3D software. So let's quickly turn off the bevel and let's show you some of the other features. So revolve is essentially similar to the previous revolve, which would take the shape and revolve it around into like a cylinder. But the cool thing is we can actually make it into steps so we can sort of create um, like uses to create quite interesting pie charts or things like that, things that require uh, different angles. Inflating adds like a balloon effect to the front of the shape. So let's quickly delete this and add a circle because I think this will look quite cool to try and show you how the new materials have been changed. So let's quickly just delete one edge to create a semicircle and then we're going to just revolve it um, as you can see, it creates a cylinder, but we actually need to flip the edge so it creates the sphere. So now that we have the shape, let's go to materials. So materials have been completely overhauled to be in line with Adobe's Substance Painter. So Substance Painter provides a few different materials which can be applied to any shape within Illustrator. Each material has their own settings like bump map, roughness, gloss, metallic. It's quite similar if you've played with nodes in like 3D software. So like for instance here we can play with the roughness to create a more smooth or bumpy shape and then again we could play with there's a bunch of settings so realistically you could just jump through and try and fine tune the material to match whatever the aesthetic you're trying to go with so let's choose this um, sort of marble texture lighting has also been adjusted so we can actually have more control so there's a few different default types of lighting, but you can also change those to make something new. They've also added the light emission, so we can change the color of the light and its intensity. So if you've got like a, a different color scene that you wanted to light something in a different way, um, you can do that through lighting. And we are also able to do dynamic shadows, which is really cool. This is something that I was quite impressed with. So if you turn the shadow on, you can create the box which shadows can cast from and then we can move around the light source to show how far away the object is from the shadow and then if you play with the settings you're able to move it around and create quite interesting shapes and then the intensity will sort of garner the entire canvas and then create that as like the base light source then if we go to let's just choose like a quick light setting and then we can also turn on our uh, ray tracing so if you have a graphics card this would be perfect to create really nice looking shadows so let's turn on ray tracing it takes a couple seconds to start up just because it's quite heavy on the graphics card but it looks really cool so like for instance here we've got softness quite high so it creates this really dispelled shadow but let's turn some of the stuff down um, when you're working, it might be an idea to actually turn off ray tracing as it will constantly reload every time or re-render every time you are trying to play with a setting.
So okay, if we drop the shadow down, we sort of still get that fall off that we've seen before, which looks quite nice. And it sort of adds to the almost fake 3D effect. So you wouldn't necessarily know this was created in Illustrator compared to previous Illustrator ideas. The cool thing is this 3D effect actually works on any shape. So here's like a little logo. So we can add a little extrude to it and then we can apply a material from the selection. So let's just choose a couple of different variations, see what happens. So here we got this like um, crate material, this silver material. Then with the lighting, you can turn on the shadow and let's just push that away. So then you can see how it looks when you move the camera around. So depending on the texture as well, the patterns will can be repetitive and they can be quite small or they can be really large depending on what you need them for. So it's always best to just fine tune to see what you're trying to use it for. So then here, look, we can move it around in the space or we can move it around in uh, the actual viewing angle. So this looks really cool and it allows us to you know, see the shape in completely 3D space and the shadow helps it pop away from the back. And then again, as this is Illustrator, sometimes you will need projects that will need to be exported for print. So you can export as a vector, which will take a little time to process. And then you can expand the appearance and it will treat it as a vector shape. Some of the materials don't look so good, but I think this is still a work in progress. So it might update as time goes on. So then here you go. You're able to move things around independently and you can still keep the materials as they are. The next feature is the share feature. This is quite a cool thing for working collaboratively. So all you have to do is save your document as a cloud based document. And then from here, you're able to copy the link or invite um, collaborators to work on your project. So you can either have them to copy or comment live onto the design. So you're able to get really quick feedback. And the cool thing is people just need to have an Adobe um, ID. They don't actually have to have a subscription. Hopefully you found this stuff interesting. And if you did, please drop a comment, like, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Thank you.